3 and 0 for the first time since 2004 when they won the NFC Championship and the Eagles became the first team in history to win its first three games after trailing in each by 10 or more points as expected it was a heated division matchup that included a brawl and Deshaun Jackson's return to face his old team Foles was 27 of 41 325 yards three TDs um, Stephen A you watched the game uh, what did the Eagles the whole prove? game the whole game it was good right uh, what did they prove with that win Mm, you know, that's a tough one right there. When you talk about what they proved, they're 3-0. and Do I consider them a team that's worthy of being undefeated? I guess you could say yes, because they are. But what they've done defensively in the first half of each game uh, is highly questionable, which is something we'll get into later because of Kerry Williams' comments about his coach, Chip Kelly. But in the end, uh, their offense is high-powered. You see with uh, Skip's boy from Vanderbilt, Matthews, a rookie with two I touchdown told you, catches. I told you, you in the preseason. At, preseason at, what? I said, beware. Yes, you did. He's coming. Yes, you did. Jordan Matthews, beware. Yes, you did. Right. You did. Yes, yeah. you did. Yes, you did. That's why I gave, that's why I gave you Thank credit. You. No one need to interrupt me to remind <laughs> you okay. when I'm trying to give you credit. <laughs> you. But my point to you is, is that Macklin is back. He was out last year. He reminded everybody why he's back. He had a big-time game. Nick Foles had a big-time game and showed a level of toughness that we didn't know he had. They did this without being able to run the football effectively with Shady McCoy, not just because he got a little concussed, but also their offensive line. Injuries personified. Four guys playing different positions on the offensive line. So, obviously, there were some protection issues. Uh, there was uh, some issues in terms of creating some holes to run the football. But still in all, they managed to get it done through special teams, through exploiting uh, the Redskins spe special teams, through also making sure to prove that as good as Kirk Cousins is, there's a reason he wasn't designated to start it. There's a reason that Skip Bayless has had his questions about Kirk Cousins because when it was really, really time on the last two drives, he couldn't get it done. Mm. It's just that simple. And so for me, I look at the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, I picked them to win the NFC East. And what they've proven to me is that they're the best team in the NFC East. That's what I see. But that's not saying a lot, to be quite honest with you. But they are impressive offensively. Their defense is highly suspect. You don't seem all that impressed with your Philadelphia Eagles. I never said I was. I just said they would be the best in the NFC East. Here come those Cowboys. Oh we'll boy. talk about that later. You're come on. Back to this game. We're not even Back there to yet. this game. <laughs> Great. This game boiled down to me with the point that you made near the end of your opening soliloquy. When it counts, Nick Foles is better and always will be better, I believe, than Kirk Cousins was yesterday when it counted in the fourth quarter. Kirk Cousins made some sweet throws yesterday, some sweet deep balls, one to Deshaun for a touchdown. Kirk Cousins threw for 102 more yards than Nick Foles for the game. That's 427 to 325. But you know what my favorite quarterback stat is? QBR, mm -hmm. scale of 0 to 100 in the fourth quarter. Nick Foles had a 91 on a scale of 100. Kirk Cousins in the fourth quarter, QBR, 12. Why was that? Because on Kirk Cousins' first three possessions, remember, it's 27 all. Third down in the first possession, misfire, poor pass. Third down, next possession, misfire, poor pass. And in the next possession, first down, misfire, really bad idea, interception. All of a sudden, it's 37 to 27, Philadelphia. Now the pressure's off, and Kirk Cousins led a terrific touchdown drive. Now you're back in the game. Now you've got a chance to win the game. You get the ball back late in the game, and you have three straight misfires. I'm sorry, Kirk Cousins. He's, he's a really he, – he is one of the – he might be the best backup quarterback he in the NFL. Yeah. But long-term starter, sure. franchise quarterback, no. Will he be there when you really, really need him? No. Am I really, really sold on the Philadelphia Eagles? I am not. I agree with you. Nick Foles showed incredible toughness yesterday. Took a lot of shots, one of them a cheap shot that we're about to talk about, and kept getting up and firing clutch throws. But in the end – Philly's defense gave up 511 yards, and I'm supposed to say wow to that? All right, Stephen A., so let's talk about that brawl. Redskins' Chris Baker yeah. gives Nick Foles a tough Fourth shoulder. Quarter. You see that right there? So look at that.
Everyone, yes. after he hit him, everyone's debating on whether or not that was a cheap shot or was the play still live because I believe Baker thought the play was still live and he could hit, he could hit foals. Uh, Skip, your reaction to that play, was it a cheap shot or not? Not only was it a cheap shot to me, Stephen A., but it was an illegal play, and he did get flagged for it. The rule says that it is now a foul if a player initiates any unnecessary contact against a player in a defenseless posture, which includes a quarterback after a possession change. In the old days, I used to think, and they used to teach the quarterback, head on a swivel after an interception, be looking, be looking, protect yourself, try to stay out of harm's way. But now the rule protects the quarterback. So again, should Nick Foles have been a little more wary of where he was? Maybe, but in this case, cheap shot, and it's just a foul. So I'm sorry, uh, Chris Baker was double out of line. I completely and totally disagree with you. A matter of fact, I'm applauding Baker for the hit. Didn't bother me at all. I actually loved it. Now, I didn't want Nick Foles to get hurt and to be knocked out of the game, uh, which I was worried about when he was writhing on the turf. But at the same time, again, it amazes me how these guys who are grown men have been taught since Pop Warner to play football a certain way. And then all of a sudden, the honchos in their suits in the league office want to infiltrate the proceedings and say, oh, no, what you've learned all your life no longer applies. And we're going to get rid of that. Nick Foles was not on the other side of the field. Nick Foles was running towards the action, jogging towards the action, knowing you're a quarterback, especially as protected as you are these days. If anything, these guys want to hit the quarterback even more now than they ever did in the past because of how pampered and protected quarterbacks are in this day and age. So knowing this stuff, you're going to jog and lollygag towards the action on a football field with grown men like you don't have anything to worry about? Shame on Nick Foles. I bet you he won't make that mistake again when you're the quarterback. What you need to do is either stay on the turf or run downfield the opposite direction on the other side of the field away from the action. Because I got news for you. If you're running any way towards the action, which Nick Foles did, and he was about 10 yards away from it, okay, running towards it, you know what? You got what you deserve. If I was at a Baker is absolutely right. It's what he's been taught. That's a football play. And if you talk to football players, they'll talk about the letter of the law. Oh, my goodness, you can't do this today because they just changed. Well, you know what? It's taking them a little time to adjust, okay? Mm -hmm. That's the way it goes. Nick Foles should have known better. He deserved to get popped. I'm happy he's not hurt. But this is football, baby. The quarterbacks are pampered enough. He deserved to get popped silly. I have no think, problem with it whatsoever. Do you think Chris Baker knew it was Nick Foles? <laughs> he said yes. he didn't. He said he, he didn't even I, know it was the quarterback. He, I, I don't believe that. I, no, I think either. he's lying about that. I yeah. think he knew it was Nick Foles. You know I what? think he knew it was Nick Foles. So what? You know, so it, what? Takes, it takes a real man uh -oh. to, to hit a quarterback like that in a defenseless posture. <sighs> Nick Foles' head is looking oh. the other way. Boy, it took a lot of guts. And oh. you know what? I'm glad you're applauding that play because I thought that play was actually a momentum turning point play in the game for the Eagles. It seemed to really jumpstart them. I it seemed the to really the game. motivate them. Didn't bother me. Yeah. Well, it showed you the character of one the team Redskins. versus the, the lack Eagles. of character of the other team. Way to go, Chris oh, Baker. Oh. Is that what we're doing? Is that what we're doing, yeah. character? Scared. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Low the man character. been taught football like this all his life. Yeah. And because some conchos on. on Park Avenue decided to change the rule at the last minute, he's supposed to uh, 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 apply. It takes time to adapt. Oh. It takes time. The quarterback's protected mm. and pampered enough. No, listen. So we're staying Nick in the Foles NFC East. As you can mm. see, the debate will be hot because the Cowboys are